Welcome back. It's time to send your very first RevenueQ message. And for that, in our project, let's create a new class and let's call it Sender. The Sender class will have a new public static void main method. We're going to have to rewrite it a bit later on for our YouTube case. But for now, I just want to have one method which is executable to send a hello world message. Now the question is how to get started with RevitMQ. We need a connection to the RevitMQ server. And it's actually rather simple to have a nice API. You want to create a new connection factory, like so. So you have your factory. And the factory gives you connections to RevitMQ. For that, you can do a couple of things. You can call factory set hosts. By default, it defaults to localhost, so you don't have to put localhost here. What you can do, obviously, if RevitMQ is running on a different, a remote server, you will put the host there. And you have set username, username like that. You have set password, you have set port. So everything that's about the connection, you can configure here. But for now, we don't need all that. We just have our connection factory with the defaults. Then, you tell the um, connection factory, please give me a new connection to RevitMQ. So there's a couple of exceptions, which I'm just going to throw here, right? And what you might want to do is always make sure in the sending case that you surround your factory new connection with a try with resources block. So you get the connection and you automatically close down the connection again, even if an exception is being thrown. So the connection is your physical socket connection to RabbitMQ. And the API, everything you want to do is like sending messages, consuming messages. You do it through a channel. So you have to call connection create channel, like so. Then our RabbitMQ is completely empty. It has no queues. We just installed it. And what you can do in your client code, you can call the method queue declare which has a couple of parameters and it declares a queue. It creates a queue on the RevitMQ server. The good thing is you can call queue declare as many times as you want. If the queue already exists with the same name, it won't do anything. It will just skip the operation. If it doesn't exist, it will create the queue. So let's create a new queue with queue name hello world. And then there's a couple of other parameters, durable, exclusive, auto delete which I'm just going to set to false here. I'm not going to cover them here now because we're going to cover them in later episodes in more detail. But this line here gives me a queue and that is everything we want. Now we have our queue, step number one. Step number two is we want to send a message to the queue. So first of all, let's just uh, send or create a message, a simple string. Obviously, you can send complex objects later on. It doesn't matter. But for now, I just want to send a string. Uh, is this the matrix? I don't know. Something like that. You call channel again and a method called basic publish, which will send messages to the queue. Now, for that, you have a couple of parameters again. As you can see, exchange, routing key, mandatory, and whatnot. I'm going to run you through every each one of these parameters now. First of all, the routing key, let's start with the simplest one, is your queue name. So you want to put that here. The exchange, we're going to cover exchanges in later episodes, uh, episodes in more detail, is just keep the name in mind, a direct exchange. These two parameters here mean send messages I get directly to the queue Hello World. As mentioned, just keep that in mind for now. I'm going to explain exchanges in more detail in future episodes. The other parameters like mandatory, the properties, again, don't matter too much. So we set them to false, to null. And byte body here, the last parameter, is your message. You always send the byte array. So you simply call message get bytes, which will convert the string to bytes, and you send that. And in the end, you just print something to the console. And maybe something like, yes, message has been sent, something like that. And that should hopefully take your string, publish it as a message to Hello World, and print, it, print out 
a success message to the console. Let's try that. You run it. That was not it. That was the wrong application. Now, once I ran sender, it says message has been sent. There has been no exception, nothing logged out to the console. And that's exactly what we wanted. That was our first success case. Now, obviously, that is a bit, you might not trust me too much on that because you only see my own printed out message, message has been sent. But how can you look inside queues now uh, to really see if the message arrived in their queue and if their queue has actually been declared? That's something we're going to have a look at in the next episode.